Let's jump straight into the topic at hand. So a recent interview got everyone talking, especially about GPT-5, the new model from OpenAI. Some crucial details about OpenAI's plans might have flown under the radar for many. Therefore, in this video, we'll dive straight into what was exactly said about these future models and bring you up to speed with everything we know about GPT-5. In fact, a whole lot has been revealed just in this past week. We can predictably say this much compute, this big of a neural network, this training data, um, this will be the capabilities of the model. Now, we can predict how it'll score on some tests. What we're really interested in, which gets to the la latter part of your question, is can we predict the sort of the qualitative new things, just the new capabilities that didn't exist at all in GPT-4 that do exist in future versions like GPT-5? Um, that seems important to figure out. But right now, we can say, you know, here's how we predict it'll do on this eval or this metric. There's a hiccup when it comes to GPT-5 and future models, though. We won't necessarily be able to predict their emerging capabilities, and this is precisely what Sam Altman, the head of OpenAI, has been discussing. But these emerging capabilities are abilities we can't foresee. In a recent AI talk that's garnered over 2.1 million views, there's a specific clip I want to share with you. It's crucial to understand what these emergent capabilities look like and how we discovered them. Some people use the metaphor that AI is like electricity, but if I pump even more electricity through the system, it doesn't pop out some other emergent intelligence, some capacity that wasn't even there before, right? Um, and so a lot of the metaphors that we're using, again, paradigmatically, you have to understand what's different about this new class of Gollum generative large language model AIs. This is one of the really surprising things talking to the experts because they will say, these models have capabilities we do not understand how they show up, when they show up, or why they show up. Um, again, not something that you would say of like the old class of AI. So here's an example. Um, these are two different models, GPT and then a different model by Google. And there's no difference in the, um, the models. They just increase in parameter size. That is, they, just, they just get bigger. What, what are parameters, Aza? It's just like the, the number, essentially, of uh, weights in a matrix. Um, so it's just, it's just the size. You're just increasing this, the scale of the thing. Um, and what you see here, and I'll move into some other examples that might be a little easier to understand, is that you ask the, these AIs to do arithmetic, and they can't do them, they can't do them, and they can't do them. And at some point, boom. They just gain the ability to do arithmetic. No one can actually predict when that'll happen. Here's another example, which is, you, you know, you train these models on all of the internet. So it, it's seen many different languages, but then you only train them to answer questions in English. So it's learned how to answer questions in English, but you increase the model size, you increase the model size, and at some point, boom, it starts being able to do question and answers in Persian. No one knows why. What we're seeing is definitely intriguing, but also a bit worrying. Imagine creating something whose capabilities are essentially unpredictable. What we're creating could potentially evolve into a form of superintelligence in the future. Of course, there are many more examples they dive into. The next one is particularly fascinating because we only became aware of certain capabilities once we designed tests for them. It's always intriguing to discover what these models can do as we expand our understanding and introduce new concepts. One such concept is the theory of mind, which they discuss extensively. It's fascinating to note how the understanding and application of this theory have advanced since 2018 to 2019. Here's another example. So AI developing theory of mind. Theory of mind is the ability to like model what somebody else is thinking. It's what enables strategic thinking. Um, so uh, in 2018, uh, GPT had no theory of mind. In 2019, barely any theory of mind. Uh, in 2020, it starts to develop the, like, the strategy level of a four-year-old. By 2022, January, it's developed the strategy level of a seven-year-old. And by November of last year, it's developed almost the strategy level of a nine-year-old. Now, here's the really creepy thing. We only discovered that AI had grown this capability last month. Now, here's where things get a bit frightening. We only discovered that AI had developed this capability just a month ago. It's indeed thought-provoking. However, the highlight of Sam Altman's recent remarks on GPT-5 was his discussion about future modalities. We know that much of the focus has been on text, but in the broader AI sphere, text is just one type of modality. In numerous research papers and across various companies, there's a concerted effort to enhance the quality of other modalities. This includes things like audio, video, and other forms of communication. What's noteworthy here is that Sam Altman mentions AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, and indicates that future modalities, specifically GPT-5, are likely to go beyond just text. 
We know that GPT-4 already incorporated some image capabilities, as seen in the developer livestream which we'll delve into later. But for now, take a look at this clip from Sam Altman. There are a lot of things about coding that I think are a particularly great modality to train these models on. Um, but that won't be, of course, the last thing we train on. I'm very excited to see what happens when we can really do video. Yeah. There's a lot of video content in the world. There's a lot of things that are, I think, much easier to learn with video than text. There's a huge debate in the field about whether a language model can get all the way to AGI. Can you represent everything that you need to know in language? Is language sufficient or do you have to have video? I personally think it's a dumb question because it probably is possible, but the fastest way to get there, the easiest way to get there will be to have these other representations like video in these models as well. Uh, again, like text is not the best for everything, even if it's capable of representing everything. Sam Altman made it clear that text alone can encapsulate everything, and he's absolutely right. Communication isn't just verbal, it encompasses body language, music, and various other forms. Hence, it's plausible that future models, be it GPT-4.2, GPT-5, or others, could incorporate video features or perhaps more advanced image features, like those we anticipate in GPT-4. This development is particularly exciting as it opens up a new frontier. Companies are already working on integrating these modalities. Meta, for instance, launched ImageBind just a few days ago. It aims to combine all these different modalities to create a unified communication pathway, which is a truly fascinating concept. Moreover, OpenAI already ventured into this realm with Dolly 2, an AI system capable of generating realistic images based on descriptions in natural language. It's intriguing to see how these advancements will shape the future of AI. Indeed, the potential for these developments is vast, and some companies like Microsoft have already started exploring it. They've launched projects like Visual Chat GPT that probe into the possibilities of interactive image conversation when it's integrated with a large language model like OpenAI's Dolly 2. This project, known as Visual Chat GPT, is actually a free demo you can use. We've made a video on it before, and it's genuinely thrilling to see what future models might look like. Although it's not 100% efficient at the moment, responses are somewhat slow, it's a glimpse into what the future of ChatGPT could be. As we've discussed, the text is only one modality. We're still missing other modes of communication like audio, images, and video. One thing to note is the recent announcement in the GPT-4 livestream that GPT-4 would be multimodal. However, this feature hasn't been launched yet. There's a lot of speculation about when this update might come. What we need to understand is that fine-tuning is necessary. After all, with the submission of various images, there could be privacy issues and other unforeseen challenges, so it's likely this feature will be released at some point, but OpenAI hasn't provided a timeline yet. When we consider GPT-5's timeline, it's interesting to remember that GPT-4 completed training in August 2022, but it was only released about seven months later. The AI teams want to ensure these models are incredibly safe before they release them to millions of people in various countries. This just proves how long these models take to train, approximately six months. Given that GPT-4 was released in March 2023, it was quite a long process. Sam Altman recently spoke about the training timeline for GPT-5. He said they're not currently training GPT-5 and won't be starting for another six months. So, considering a timeline, it's unlikely we'll see GPT-5 this year. Do you agree with that? Would you, would you pause any further development for six months or longer? Uh, so first of all, we, after we finished training GPT-4, we waited more than six months to deploy it. Um, we are not currently training what will be GPT-5. We don't have plans to do it in the next six months. That statement came from a session where Sam Altman was testifying before Congress regarding the fast-paced advancements in AI development. As he pointed out, they won't be starting the training of GPT-5 for at least the next six months. Therefore, it seems pretty clear that we won't see GPT-5 this year. However, from Sam's recent comments, it appears that GPT-5 and later versions of GPT-4 leading up to it are expected to shift their focus. While text has been the primary mode so far, future iterations are likely to concentrate more on other modalities, including images and videos. But there's one crucial element that seems to have been overlooked, and that's the modality of audio. I believe this could be a key feature of GPT-5 or subsequent versions of GPT-4. My reasoning stems from OpenAI's blog posts and their research findings. There's one particular post that hasn't garnered much attention, and it's titled Whisper. It discusses their work on a neural net called Whisper, which they've trained and open-sourced. The remarkable thing about Whisper is that it comes close to human-level robustness and accuracy in English speech recognition. The potential uses for this are vast. 
Knowing that future modalities could include things like images, videos, and audio, it seems likely that OpenAI already has the necessary infrastructure to build this. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see updates in the future where ChatGPT, GPT-4, or GPT-5 includes the capacity to carry out real-time conversations using audio input. The software they've developed seems highly impressive. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Are you looking forward to GPT-5, or are you more interested in seeing additional features for GPT-4? Do let me know in comments below and make sure to watch the videos popping on the screen right now and if you like them subscribe to my channel.